Welcome to a series on the channel, a brand new one, where I go over crazy things in history that tickle my conspiracy theory fancy. In this inaugural episode, I'm going to be talking about the existence and the cover-up of giants, and some theories on why the existence of these creatures are being covered up, and stuff like that. I want to show you some old stuff, some new stuff, get ready for some stuff, okay? Obviously, I'm into conspiracy theories and stuff like this, so... And I know that not all of what I'm gonna say is probably true, but whatever. I mean, come on. Open up your mind. Have some fun for a second. Don't, don't live a miserable life, okay? Let's get into it. Giants in history. Something I find pretty interesting is that giants are depicted in so many different ancient cultures and ancient texts. There are giants shown in ancient Egyptian paintings, doing different tasks, like building the actual pyramids. You can see these depictions of them picking up the blocks of the pyramid on their backs and how they're way taller than a normal person is. There's also paintings in Egyptian culture of them picking up and placing the Egyptian obelisks in the ground. There's also paintings from the same Egyptians that show giants next to animals, like giraffes. And we know the giraffes are huge, and this giant is as big as the giraffe, right? But Egypt is by no means the only ancient civilization that talks about giants. In fact, I won't even be able to talk about all the civilizations that do. There's so many of them, but I am going to hit the high points. There's mention of giants in the ancient epic, the Ramayana. There's also mention, of course, in Sanskrit tales and Sumerian tales, as well as the Bible and in many other cultures. We're gonna get into all that right now. The Sumerians have a pretty interesting history when it comes to giants. The Anunnaki, which were normally associated with gods or creators or angels, that kind of thing, were giants. There are a few huge parallels between the Anunnaki stories and the other stories from the Sumerians and the Bible. Like, it's scary how similar some of these things are. So one of the main parallels between the Sumerian texts and the Bible text is that the Sumerian giants, the Anunnaki, were gods who chose to live on the earth, right? They were these giant creatures who made the conscious decision to live here on the earth, and that's in the Sumerian texts. In the Bible, giants like Goliath descended from the Anakites, which were a race of giants that came from fallen angels breeding and having children with the daughters of man, the women of the earth. This is referred to as the Nephilims, and we'll get into some more crazy crazy stuff about that. In the Sumerian text, that the giants came from these gods, and they were gods, and they chose to live here, you think it's a coincidence that the Bible mentions practically the same thing. Fallen angels from heaven choosing to have children with women on the earth, and those, the children being giants, and they're living here. It's, it's such a similar story in very similar texts. Pretty cool. In Genesis 6 verse 4, it says, quote, there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. So if you're a Christian and you believe that, you know, the Bible is the true authority and everything, then that verse quite literally proves the existence of giants. But history doesn't stop there <laughs> by, by any chance. In the ancient European cultures, they refer to giants as some sort of helper to humanity. So this benevolent being, this benevolent race that is out to help the men, you know, who are smaller, less advanced. They, they said that these giants help them build their monolithic structures. They were called the Gentilac, which kind of means someone who wasn't Jewish. They're mentioned in the Basque mythology, and the Gentilac were around 12 feet tall. They were really hairy as well, which is pretty interesting because in most depictions, not all of them were hairy. They were just giant men, right? But these were like wild giants. They also mentioned that they refused to live in the valleys where the humans lived. So pretty much the humans would live in these valleys near the rivers to have access to water. But the giants, they chose to live in the mountains, in the caves, up away from it all. Okay, now the historical nerd in me is done rambling, and I'm going to talk about more modern realistic stuff about giants. So here we had the ancient Egyptian depictions. We had the depictions in the Ramayana. We had the mentions in the ancient Sumerian literature. There are stories and mentions and epics in the Basque texts, and there are verses in the Bible that all confirm the existence of these giants in our history. Did they all just make it up? Is it all a ruse, some sort of big 
fat lie? I don't think so. Physical evidence. Now, as any proper skeptic would, you know, they ask, where's the evidence? Well, there are some very weird and interesting things about that. What if I told you that through all of recorded history, giant skeletons and skulls and bones have been recovered across the entire world, but in India, the Middle East, and the Americas specifically? Yes, some of them have been hoaxes, but in every tall tale, there is a little bit of truth. You know this. There's a pretty popular case that involves the Smithsonian Museum supposedly destroying evidence of these giants existing. Evidence in the tens of thousands of skulls and skeletons and bones. Of course, the Smithsonian has said that this all was fake and this never happened and that the proof is fake and it's all a ruse. Of course they would say that. Like, do you think for one second that one of the biggest museum organizations in the world would openly come out and say, Something like this that would change the entire perception of what most humans think. Of course they wouldn't. In this alleged cover-up by the Smithsonian, they were supposedly told to destroy these pieces of evidence, this evidence of giants, to quote, protect the mainstream chronology of human evolution, end quote. And that quote was said in the trial between the Smithsonian Institute and the AIAA, or the American Institute of Archaeology which is a huge company that's all about like transparency, openness, you know, that kind of stuff. Finding the root causes and root to everything. The AIAA claimed what I just told you, you know, that the Smithsonian is, is hiding stuff, is not telling us the full truth. Of course, after the AIAA came out, they were taken to court for defamation <laughs> because you can't just, you know, come out and claim that one of the biggest museums ever is hiding the truth from the humans, right? And I mean, that's not, that's probably not the best way to go about it. But that's what happened. But during the court case, several Smithsonian whistleblowers apparently came forth to confirm that there are indeed documents proving this mass destruction of the giant skulls and skeletons, and that some of these skeletons that were destroyed were 12 feet tall. 12 feet tall. And the AIAA wasn't done with just these claims and these whistleblowers, right? They had acquired a giant femur. It was a human bone. This bone was supposedly stolen from the Smithsonian back in the 1930s by a curator that worked pretty high up in the company. Now, he kept this bone secret in his house his entire life. He didn't tell anyone about it. He kept it secret. And on his deathbed, he admitted about this Smithsonian cover-up. He said, quote, we are hiding the truth about the forefathers of humanity, our ancestors, the giants who roamed the earth, as recalled in the Bible and in ancient texts of the world. Wow. Now let's pretend for one second that that quote was real. You have to imagine how paradigm shifting this information would be if it in fact did come out and if, if this all was true. The typical evolutionary rhetoric, if people believe in that, if they were told that giants did in fact exist and that humanity is descendants of giants or something along those lines, that would be a paradigm shifting in our entire understanding of everything. It would change a lot, it would shake it up a lot, and they don't want that. Right? That's what they don't want. The ruling of this court case was that the Supreme Court ordered the Smithsonian to release any documents that pertain to the things I just told you. But now, the Smithsonian and many online sources and other sources are claiming that all the pictures you've been seeing are hoaxes, photoshops, bad renders, that kind of stuff, and that no records of giants ever existed in the archives of the Smithsonian. Now, again, if you're a conspiracy person like me, now I'm, you know, I'm not crazy, right? I promise. If, if you have any brains at all, you're probably going to understand that they're going to call everything a hoax. They've always called everything a hoax, but not everything can be a hoax. You know, we're not, we're not just trapped to believe exactly what everybody tells us, right? We have free thinking, okay? But it's not just people in big government groups that are claiming the giants existed. Just a quick Google search will tell you about the time that in the Vietnam War, a platoon of American Green Berets supposedly ran into several giants red-haired giants in the remote mountains of Vietnam. They lived in caves and they had giant spears that they used as weapons. And they crushed several members of this platoon and the people that survived were forced to go into silence about it. Mr. Ballin made a pretty great video about that story. I'll link it down below. It's a crazy one. There's been plenty other people who have claimed to find bones on their property or their family member's property or that, you know, someone in their family found skeletons and it was taken away. There's so many things that have been passed down that say that people have found these giant skeletons. I'm sure, obviously, some of it is fake. Not everything is true, but not everything is fake either. And that's what you got to understand, skeptics. So why cover it all up? What do you gain from doing this? Well, as I said earlier, 
There are tons of theories of the actual reasons behind these cover-ups. One is that, you know, they're hiding the existence of these giants because in some ways it would prove that the Bible and other ancient texts are real and that the contents inside of them were indeed truthful and that these giants will go against the modern rhetoric taught about normal evolution. Skeptics of these theories that I've talked about seem just to bash all people who believe in the idea that giants ever existed. Like specifically the giant theory, you know, there's other theories that they don't really get mad at, but this theory specifically, man, I saw like online, people get like really angry at those who believe that these might be true. But to those kind of people, I say, you know, mammoths existed. Those are real. We have evidence that those existed. And elephants are the modern day descendants of mammoths. Mammoths were twice, three times, four times the size of elephants. So why is it hard to believe that bigger humans used to exist, but you'll believe that mammoths existed? I don't understand that. Why do they hate the idea of it so much? I don't know. Like I said, this is all just to tickle my conspiracy theory fancy. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you all for watching. I really want to do more videos like this on the channel. Just these kind of chill, laid back, almost rants. I wouldn't call it a rant, but... This is the kind of stuff I really enjoy looking into in my personal life. It's one of my hobbies. That's why I started this channel. Uh, so if you did like this video, make sure to let me know down below. I want to do others like this. Anyways, thank you for watching and supporting me. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.